Dudes and dudettes, how are you guys? This is Jazzy and welcome back to The Mixer, the series where I tell you guys about things happening in the world and I give you really awesome and educative information about topics that are really, really cool to cover, at least for me. And today I'm gonna talk about something that I consider to be very, very magnificent and really awe. Oh, like awe-inspiring, you know, it's jaw-dropping. The Chinese Terracotta Army, okay? Not sure that's how you pronounce it. Terracotta, Terracotta, I think it's Terracotta. I'm gonna call it the Terracotta Army, okay? It is a collection of terracotta sculptures located in, uh, in China, obviously, and it depicts the armies of Qu Queen Shi Huang, who was the very first emperor of China, and it's a form of funerary art that was buried with the emperor back in 2010 through 2009 BCE, with the purpose of supposedly protecting him in his afterlife, you know? Now, there are many, many, many soldiers in this army, you know, and apparently they are there to guard the emperor, you know, but then again, I think they failed because today it has become one of the most, you know, visited tourist attractions in the world. So I don't think they did a very good job of protecting the guy, you know, and uh, it's actually considered a UNESCO World Heritage, Heritage Site, you know, and I have a few little tidbits of info here. Okay, uh, so here's the thing. Now, they date from way, way back then, like I said, BCE, you know, and the thing with this, uh, this collection specifically is that it is crazy because it was estimated back in 2007 that this terracotta, like the three pits that contain the terracotta army, they have, I'm gonna put them here for you guys, uh, uh, more than 8,000 soldiers with 130 chariots and uh, these chariots with uh, 520 horses, 150 cavalry horses, and the, the majority of them are buried in the mausoleum, you know, and they also have other... Uh, they also have other non-military figures too. They have officials, acrobats, strongmen, and musicians, you know? So it's pretty crazy. It's very crazy. And it was actually discovered back in 1974 uh, by local farmers in, uh, I can't pronounce this, Lingtong County outside Xinyang, Xinxiang in China. <laughs> Oh my god, and uh, yeah, they pretty much have a whole bunch of collection of different uh, warriors, chariots, horses, you know? I'm going to show you guys a few photos right here, some of them. Okay, so now in my opinion, this is really interesting because guys, it is like, it's it's pretty crazy because I mean, there are a lot of uh, uh, sculptures down there, you know, but the crazy thing is that each one of them has a different face, you know, they have like, not, not one of them has the same face, everyone is individual, so, but then again, uh, scholars have identified at least 10 different uh, basic shapes, you know, and I think that it's pretty crazy because I mean, holy crap, you know, I mean, try to imagine, like who the hell sculpted these things, you know? I mean, the <laughs> I understand that we're talking about a time where you didn't have YouTube or Netflix, you know, but man, they, <laughs> those guys probably did nothing. Like they had nothing at all to do with their spare time and they made all of these damn figures, you know? But whatever, we're not, I'm not here to judge, I'm just here to, to educate you guys, you know, so. But oh my God, imagine how long it took to freaking make these damn figures, man. Okay, a few more little tidbits of info here for you guys. The terracotta figures are all life-size, so they pretty much are about normal human height, but they typically range from about uh, 5.7 feet tall to 6.6 .6 feet tall, you know? So uh, the officers are typically a little bit taller because they're a little more important in rank, you know? And uh, the soldiers are actually uh, placed in accordance to rank, you know? And they basically have these kinds of, uh, these kinds of soldiers here, okay? Armored infantry, unarmored infantry, Cavalrymen who wear a pillbox hat, helmeted drivers of chariots with more armor protection, spear carrying charioteers, kneeling crossbowmen or archers who are also armored, uh, standing archers who are not armored, as well as generals and other lower ranking officers. Whew. Anyway, there are many variations in the uniforms for the ranks because you guys know that, well, our arm, all armies in general around the world have different ranks and the Chinese army was no exception. And uh, some of them might wear shin pads and others might not. Some of them might have long trousers or short trousers. They might be padded or not padded. Their body armor is also that varies on uh, rank, function, and position, you know. And there are also, like I said before, a lot of horses, you know, very, very cool horses too. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys a few photos here if I can. I already put them uh, earlier, but I also want to show them to you here so this right here is an example of a terracotta soldier his helmet here I think that's really cool you know uh, from the side 
And then we have uh, this other one here. Whoop. This guy here who looks a little creepy. It's almost like nightmare fuel. It's like a horror movie. He looks very, very scary. And um, got some recreated figures here. And I think that uh, uh, the way that they were constructed was by, they were manufactured in workshops, right? By uh, government laborers or local craftsmen using materials from the local places. And heads, arms, legs, and torsos were all made separately. And then they were assembled by looting the pieces together. You know, it's very hard to break them. And then when they were completed, they were, they were placed in precise military formation. The faces were created using molds. And uh, like I said before, 10 different face molds were used. Then they added clay to provide individual facial features and then make each one appear a little different and it's believed that their legs were made in the same way you know drainage pipes manufactured at the time and uh pretty much a whole lot of stuff and they also had weaponry this is what i think is really cool if you guys can see it uh, i'm gonna show you here hold on uh you got th this is a bronze Gion sword one of the swords that are carried by some of the figures and this is a bronze helmet a nerd from the site so pretty much everything was made of bronze and copper and this here is a uh, armor also a nerd from it so you have a, a sword a helmet and a, a sort of like a torso plate you know which i think is really cool and a lot of them are carrying weapons and uh some of them don't but still um i do believe guys that this is a site that should be preserved you know people like i can understand how it's a tourist attraction i would love to go there myself you know i I think it would be really cool i would love to visit it but i do get like if i get lost in there if i'm locked in there by myself i might get a little scared because i don't know what if one of these damn things comes to life and freaking uh attacks me you know i don't know here are some more photos of the army wow there are a lot of photos of the army here um from different angles this is the gallery that you guys can see on the page you can see that there are many many soldiers eight thousand in total you can see that they are all standing precise military formation see and there's also some horses here you're going to see the horses pretty soon uh, there are three different here are the horses there are three different pits containing the warriors i think it's really awesome a little more a few more horses here so i really do think that this is something that's really cool you know i think it's really nice when i was researching it, i was like man this is awesome you know because like i tried to imagine how how much work would have been put into this you know and how long it took to do like i said before people back then just had way too much free time on their hands you know like imagine trying to do something like that today i probably wouldn't do that even to get views on youtube <laughs> Now, going a little bit further back to when it was discovered back in, the, in 74, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, that specifically. It was actually discovered by a group of farmers. Why do the Chinese have such complicated names? Yang Zifa, his five brothers, and his neighbor Wang Puzi, <laughs> Wang Puzi <laughs> who were digging a well approximately 1.5 kilometers east of the Emperor's Tomb Mount at Mount Li, which is in Lishan. And it's a region that's riddled with underground springs and water courses, right? And for many centuries, there were occasional reports that mentioned pieces of terracotta figures and also fragments of the necropolis, you know, his grave, like uh, roofing tiles, bricks, and chunks of masonry. And so this discovery prompted Chinese archaeologists, including, oh my God, Zhao Kangbin, <laughs> to investigate, which revealed the largest pottery figurine group ever found, and a museum complex has been constructed over the area since then. And the largest pit is enclosed by a roof structure, you know, so I think that's really cool. And, well, guys, uh, it's like... It's a very, very cool place to visit. I would love to go and, and like see it from with my own eyes, you know, but I do want to respect it as a, a cultural heritage site. So for example, if I go, I probably wouldn't touch anything. You know, it's kind of like the catacombs in Paris, you know, it's very, it's very awkward, you know, because you're there seeing many, many skulls of people who were dead, you know, but I would love to visit this. And I actually think that it would be really cool to do a horror movie, you know, in the, uh, to do a horror movie set in uh you know the the terracotta mausoleum you know i don't know if, if if such a thing does exist you know but i think it's a missed opportunity for hollywood directors you know maybe there even already is one and it's just obscure it's a chinese movie you know but i think that america you know hollywood could try to do you know could try to do um could try to do a horror movie set uh within a terracotta mausoleum i think it would be very nice i don't know imagine a, a movie about the terracotta army where i don't know some a group of tourists gets trapped in there they get lost and then they can't get out and then slowly the terracotta figures start to come to life and stalk them you know i mean that'd be cool man imagine you're just walking by you know and you see a terracotta figure like I mean, I think that would be really cool. I honestly think that would be really awesome. You know, like a head just snaps in your direction as you're walking by, you know, then it just picks up a sword and uh, I don't know. I think it'd be really nice. Uh, the, the first exposure that I got to uh, 
the Terracotta Army was way back in Wendy Wu, Homecoming Warrior. You guys remember that movie on Disney Channel with uh, Brenda Song and Shin Koyamada? I think that was really cool because there actually were a few scenes that took place there. I believe one of the security guards or uh, Wendy's mom actually worked at the museum where they housed the Terracotta Army. I do believe that's what it was. Or maybe I'm just confusing it, you know, and there were just a few pieces of the... I don't remember anymore, but anyway, uh, that has been today's video, guys. I think I've... Uh, I already rambled them enough. If you guys saw me uh, messing with something under my camera, it's because it was my, uh, it's my little cheat sheet that I keep under the camera now so I don't have to memorize a bunch of stuff. But I hope you guys really liked it. I hope you found it entertaining. I really think that the Terracotta Army is awesome. I, I would love to go there one day, you know. Even though China is a little in a complicated situation because of the COVID, you know, that's where the virus started. So I'm gonna try to stay away from there for a while. But still, I think it would be nice to visit there one day once all of this crazy COVID stuff uh, is over, you know. But yeah, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. You found it entertaining. If you did, please give it a like. I had a lot of fun doing this one, you know. I'm all smiles now, mostly because my last video was talking about Ted Bundy, so that wasn't really a thing to smile about. So I feel much better now, you know. So that's it, guys. I hope you found this topic interesting. Make sure to drop a comment if you did and share it to all of your friends if you like this video, you know. And even if you didn't, give it a dislike so I can at least know that you didn't like it, okay? So that's it for now. This is Chazzy signing out for now. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.